At the end of times, the Bible reveals a terrifying scenario, the wrath of God is poured out as judgment for the sins of humanity. The Apostle John, in his vision in the book of Revelation, gives us a glimpse of this dark time. Imagine an angel searching for someone worthy to open the book that will unleash these events. The tension grows when John discovers that no one is considered worthy, and his tears echo through eternity. But then, hope arises, do not weep. Behold, the Lion of the tribe of Judah has triumphed. And so, the Lamb, surrounded by celestial beings, begins to break the seals, revealing the horrors that await the earth. The opening of the seals is not just a symbolic act, it is a call to reflect on what is to come. The four horsemen of the apocalypse emerge, bringing war, famine, and death. And even in the face of such calamity, many will not turn to God. What would you do amidst so much destruction? How would you respond to the call for repentance? Get ready, because as we explore each seal, the gravity of what is to come becomes clearer. Stay tuned. The End of Times and God's Judgment When we talk about the end of times, it is impossible not to feel a certain weight in the words. Christian eschatology, in particular, brings us this idea of divine judgment that is not just an abstract concept but something that resonates deeply in people's beliefs and hopes. The Book of Revelation offers us a powerful vision of what is to come, inviting all to reflection and repentance. After all, the central message is clear, it is a call for humanity to turn to God before it is too late. Understanding God's judgment involves a series of elements that make us question our actions and the state of the world. It is a reminder that, despite difficulties and injustices, there is a God who watches everything and who, in His infinite justice, will bring an end to all of this. Repentance, therefore, is not just an action but an attitude of the heart that prepares us for what is to come. And this is not something to be faced with fear, but with the hope of redemption. Many see Revelation as a frightening account, but it also offers a vision of renewal and restoration. The idea that there will be a final judgment can be seen as an opportunity for those who repent and seek a new life. It is a chance to align with the divine will and understand that, even in the midst of tribulations, there is a greater purpose at work. Moreover, God's judgment is a theme that reminds us of the need for personal responsibility. Each of us has a role in the story of humanity and must consider how our choices influence not only our own lives but also society as a whole. It is an invitation to reflect on our role in the world and how we can contribute to a better future. The End of Times is a message that echoes through the generations, sparking debates, reflections, and above all, the search for a closer relationship with God. And in this process, repentance becomes a key to understanding divine judgment and the hope of a new beginning. The Seven Seals and Their Meanings In Revelation, the seven seals represent a sequence of events that mark the unfolding of the final times. The opening of each seal by the Lamb is an action loaded with symbolism and meaning, revealing not only what is to come but also the depth of God's message. Throughout this narrative, we can perceive that each seal brings with it a new revelation, a new aspect of God's judgment upon the earth. The first seal, for example, introduces the Antichrist, symbolizing the arrival of a leader who deceives and conquers. This figure is often associated with a period of great tribulation, where the truth is distorted, and many are led to believe in false promises. The coming of the Antichrist is not only a warning but also a call to vigilance and discernment on the part of the faithful, who must be alert to the enemy's schemes. The four horsemen, who emerge with the opening of the following seals, bring a powerful representation of the calamities that will affect humanity. Each horseman represents a different phase of human suffering, conquest, war, famine, and death. This personification makes us reflect on the state of the world and warns us about the consequences of turning away from God. These seals are not just isolated events but a call to reflection on human behavior and its consequences. They remind us that the choices we make today can have a lasting impact on the future. The process of opening the seals is, therefore, 
a metaphor for the unfolding of the events that will lead to the final judgment, where God's justice will be fully revealed. Understanding the seven seals is ultimately about understanding that each of them carries a lesson about life, faith, and the need to be prepared for what is to come. They not only inform us about the end but also challenge us to live in a way that reflects the values of God's kingdom in a world that often seems lost. The Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse The Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse are one of the most impactful and memorable images in John's book. They emerge as symbolic figures representing the challenges and tribulations humanity will face in the end times. Each horseman brings a powerful message and an aspect of human suffering that cannot be ignored. The first horseman, riding a white horse, is often associated with conquest and deception, a reminder that not everything that appears victorious is truly good. The second horseman, riding a red horse, symbolizes war and violence that will spread across the world. He carries a sword, representing the conflict and division that can arise between nations and peoples. This image makes us reflect on human nature and the tendency to seek power and control, often at the expense of peace and harmony. The third horseman, on a black horse, represents famine and scarcity. His presence is a warning about the devastating effects of greed and the poor management of resources. Famine is a recurring theme in human history, and its inclusion here reminds us that, in times of crisis, it is essential to care for one another and seek fair solutions for all. The fourth horseman, riding a pale horse, symbolizes death, an inevitable consequence of the calamities the other horsemen bring. Death is not only physical but also spiritual, representing the separation from God and the loss of hope. This figure is a somber reminder that life is precious and must be lived with purpose and intention. Thus, the four horsemen of the apocalypse are not just characters in an apocalyptic narrative but representations of the challenges we face daily. They invite us to reflect on the human condition and the importance of seeking a path of faith and hope, even in the midst of the tribulations life can present. Each horseman is an opportunity for learning and a call to action so that we can together build a better world. The Seven Trumpets the seven trumpets are one of the most dramatic and significant elements of the Book of Revelation. They represent announcements of divine judgments that echo through heaven and earth, creating an atmosphere of expectation and fear. Each trumpet blast brings with it a new judgment, revealing the intensity of God's wrath and the seriousness of the call to repentance. As each trumpet sounds, the events that unfold become increasingly terrifying, reflecting the unchanging character of divine justice. The first trumpet blast results in hail and fire mixed with blood falling, consuming a third of the earth. This apocalyptic scenario prompts reflection on the state of the world and the consequences of disobedience and sin. The inhabitants of the earth, who once ignored divine warnings, are confronted with the devastating reality of their choices. The second trumpet brings the destruction of a third of the sea, turning it into blood and leading to the death of marine creatures, symbolizing the spiritual contamination that affects humanity. As the trumpets sound, the impact of the judgments becomes even more intense. The third trumpet brings bitterness to the world, with the fall of a star called Wormwood, poisoning the water sources. This event serves as a warning about the need to seek the true source of life and purification. On the other hand, the fourth trumpet results in darkness falling over the earth, symbolizing the absence of divine light and the depth of human depravity. The blast of the fifth trumpet is particularly notable, as it unleashes a horde of locusts from the abyss, which have the power to torment those who do not have God's mark. This vivid image is a representation of the suffering that sin brings to people's lives, showing that even in the midst of judgment, many still refuse to repent. The cycle of judgments continues, culminating in the sixth trumpet, which brings death to a third of humanity, highlighting the urgency of repentance before Christ's imminent return. The Role of the Antichrist The figure of the Antichrist is one of the most intriguing and feared in the scriptures and, more specifically, in Revelation. He appears as a charismatic leader, promising peace and security, but who, in reality, is an agent of destruction and deception. 
The Antichrist reveals himself at a time of great confusion and despair when humanity is searching for answers and solutions to its problems. This search for someone to bring relief opens the doors for the acceptance of this evil leader. The revelation of the Antichrist is closely tied to the concept of deception. He presents himself as the solution to the world's ills but, at the same time, leads people away from God. The scriptures warn that many will be seduced by his empty promises, and his influence will spread rapidly among those who cannot discern the truth. This creates an environment ripe for apostasy, where genuine faith is replaced by worship of the false messiah. During the period of the Great Tribulation, the Antichrist wields unprecedented power. He sets himself up as a god, demanding worship and loyalty. This period is marked by intense persecution of those who oppose him, especially Christians who refuse to be marked with the sign of the beast. The Antichrist, therefore, is not just a political leader but a personification of evil that opposes all that is holy and just. The fight against the Antichrist is a spiritual battle that goes beyond the physical. Those who remain steadfast in their faith face not only oppression but also the need to resist a system that seeks to silence the truth. The role of the Antichrist thus serves as a test of believers' faith, who must remain firm even in the face of adversity. In the end, the defeat of the Antichrist is a promise of hope. The Bible makes it clear that he will meet his final destiny and that God's kingdom will prevail. This certainty brings comfort and encouragement to those fighting against evil, reminding them that although the Antichrist may seem powerful, the true authority belongs to God. The Great Tribulation the Great Tribulation is a period of intense suffering and judgment that unfolds in the pages of Revelation. It is a time marked by anguish, despair, and the revelation of the true state of the human heart. Many prophecies describe this time as a final test, where the choices made by individuals will have eternal consequences. During this phase, humanity will be confronted with the consequences of its rebellion and estrangement from God. The events of the Great Tribulation are devastating. Natural disasters, wars, and persecutions are just some of the manifestations of this time of judgment. The entire earth experiences a cry for justice as people face the consequences of their actions. The apocalyptic narrative is clear, those who ignored the warnings of repentance will now have to deal with the reality of their decisions. Suffering is constant, and despair permeates society. Moreover, the Great Tribulation is a time of separation. True faith is tested and refined, while many turn away from God and give in to apostasy. The pressure of the Antichrist and his evil system intensifies, leading many to conform to the culture of deception. However, this is also a period when the faithful unite in resistance, seeking to strengthen one another and remain firm in their convictions. In this context, prayer and intercession become fundamental. Believers cry out to God for protection and justice, knowing that their suffering is not in vain. God's promises become an anchor in the storm, bringing hope and courage to those who refuse to bow before evil. The Great Tribulation culminates in a cry for redemption and deliverance. It is a time of preparation for divine intervention, where God remembers His chosen ones and responds to the cry of those who remain faithful. This period, though dark, is also a prelude to God's final victory over evil and the restoration of creation. The Martyrs and the Cry for Justice The martyrs, central figures in the narrative of Revelation, are those who, for their faith, faced death and suffering. They are not just victims of an oppressive system, they represent the resistance and strength of deep beliefs. In a moment of despair, these martyrs gather under the celestial altar, crying out for justice. This powerful image evokes empathy and reflection, as each of them carries stories of unwavering faith and sacrifice. The martyr's prayer is a collective cry that echoes in the heavens, asking God to intervene and restore divine order. This plea is not just for revenge but for a genuine desire to see justice prevail. God's response to this cry is a recurring theme in eschatology showing that God does not ignore the suffering of the righteous. He hears, cares, and in his wisdom, acts at the right moment. 
The martyrs symbolize the struggle between good and evil, representing all those who refuse to give in to the pressure of the world. Their presence is a reminder that faith may demand profound sacrifices but also brings the hope that justice will be done. In the narrative of Revelation, they are an active voice, reminding everyone that resistance has a price, but that ultimately, this resistance is rewarded. Moreover, the figure of the martyrs touches on a sensitive point of human experience, the search for meaning amid suffering. They question, challenge, and ultimately affirm faith, even in the face of death. This struggle reflects the tensions many face in their own faith journeys, where certainty mingles with doubt, but hope never fades. The martyr's cry is connected to a promise of restoration. Their prayer is not in vain. The apocalyptic narrative teaches us that God's justice is inevitable, and those who suffered for their faith will be remembered and honored. This certainty brings comfort to those who, in times of crisis, need to believe that there is a greater purpose in the pain. Catastrophes and Natural Judgments The catastrophes and natural judgments described in Revelation are manifestations of God's wrath, a theme that provokes both fear and reflection. These events do not arise out of nowhere, they are part of a divine plan that aims to warn and correct humanity. The idea that natural disasters can be a sign of judgment sparks discussions about the nature of suffering and divine justice. When we talk about catastrophes, the mind quickly turns to scenes of destruction, but it is essential to understand the spiritual meaning behind these occurrences. They serve as a call to repentance, an opportunity for humanity to reassess its choices and turn to God. This concept is especially relevant in times of crisis when people seek to understand the reasons for their suffering. The images of plagues, earthquakes, and other calamities are often interpreted as a way for God to capture the attention of the nations. These manifestations are not just random events, they have a purpose. In witnessing the chaos around them, many are led to question their beliefs and seek answers. Thus, catastrophes serve as a catalyst for spiritual reflection. However, human responses to these tragedies can vary. While some turn to God for comfort, others may feel abandoned or question the very existence of a just God. This duality is a fundamental part of the human experience in the face of suffering. Revelation reminds us that even amid judgment, the opportunity for repentance and reconciliation is always present. The catastrophes and natural judgments are a reminder that creation is under the authority of a sovereign God. As the world faces the fury of storms and the consequences of its actions, hope remains in the promise that, even in the worst situations, God's justice and mercy will prevail. The Battle of Armageddon the Battle of Armageddon is perhaps one of the most emblematic events in Revelation, symbolizing the final confrontation between the forces of good and evil. This battle is not just a physical fight between armies, it is a representation of the spiritual conflict that permeates all of human history. At its core, it is a struggle for the soul of humanity, where each side seeks to win the loyalty and worship of the peoples. The Armageddon scene is described as a moment of intense tension, where the nations gather against Israel. This gathering of evil forces points to a moral and spiritual collapse, reflecting the resistance of evil to divine truth. The fact that the nations unite to fight against God's chosen people reveals the depth of the conflict between the ideologies that permeate the world. Every detail of this battle is loaded with symbolism. The forces of evil may seem dominant but the apocalyptic narrative assures us that the final victory belongs to God. The Armageddon fight is a reminder that even in the worst circumstances, light will prevail over darkness. This hope is vital for those who remain firm in the faith, even when all seems lost. As the events unfold, the cry for justice and the demand for divine intervention intensify. Armageddon is not just an isolated event, it is the climax of a struggle that began long before. Those who oppose God and his plan of salvation face the consequences of their choices, and this battle is the culmination of that process. The Battle of Armageddon represents the certainty that evil will be defeated. It is a moment of hope and renewal when God's justice will be established once and for all. 
For believers, the victory over evil is a promise that transcends time, a reminder that true peace and reconciliation lie in the hands of the Creator. The Last Bowl and the Final Judgment The seventh bowl, the climax of God's judgments, brings with it a gravity that cannot be ignored. This monumental event represents the moment when divine wrath is poured out upon the earth in a definitive manner. The image of the last bowl is powerful and evocative, symbolizing the conclusion of a cycle of judgments that have been announced throughout Revelation. The impact of this bowl is broad and undeniable, affecting both nature and humanity. The final judgment that follows the pouring of the last bowl is not just a matter of punishment but also of restoration. While the wicked face the consequences of their actions, those who remain faithful are reminded that God's justice is perfect and inevitable. This contrast between the righteous and the wicked is central to the narrative, reinforcing the idea that each will be rewarded according to their deeds. The destruction of the Antichrist's empire is another crucial aspect of this final judgment. The Antichrist, who set himself up as a figure of authority and deception, will see his dominion crumble before divine justice. This fall is a moment of celebration for those who long for truth and justice, symbolizing the defeat of evil in all its forms. The narrative of Revelation assures that despite all oppression, truth will always prevail. Moreover, the last bowl and the final judgment also bring a call to repentance. Even in the midst of judgment, the message of hope and restoration is present. God, in His mercy, still offers the opportunity for salvation until the last moment. This aspect of the final judgment is a testimony to divine love, which desires that all turn to Him. The final judgment is the culmination of the entire apocalyptic narrative. It is the moment when all of God's promises are fulfilled, and order is restored. Those who remain faithful can look to the future with hope, knowing that victory over evil is guaranteed. The last bowl, therefore, is not just a symbol of judgment but also a sign of renewal and hope for those who trust in divine promises. And so, throughout this video, we have explored the depths of Revelation, diving into John's visions and the meanings of the seven seals and the seven trumpets. It is impressive to see how the Bible, even in its darkest passages, always offers us a call to reflection and repentance. Have you ever stopped to think about what all this means for us today? How can we apply these lessons in our daily lives? As the events described unfold, we are confronted with the reality of divine justice and the urgency of our choices. So, are you ready to commit to your faith? How about taking this moment to reassess your spiritual walk? Remember, each day is a new opportunity to turn to the Lord. And before we close, I want to know, which part of this message touched your heart the most? Leave your comment below. Don't forget to like and share this video with those who also need to hear this message. God has a purpose for each of us, and together, we can spread this truth. Stay tuned for more content, and see you next time.